In this lesson, we are going to explore the idea of a relation and a function. And we're specifically going to talk about domain and range. Maybe your teacher's done something called a mapping diagram. Not all schools do that, but some do. Uh, we're also going to look at graphing the different relations and functions. And then we're also going to be able to tell, is it a function or is it not a function? So here is the first one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all these different things. Okay, so here they give you a set of values. Okay, now remember... All of the values in the beginning, the first one, those are called x values. And they can also be thought of as input. And they are also part of domain. Then if we look at the second value for each of them, those ones are called y values. They are also called output values. And they are also part of range. Okay, so if they ask us for the domain and the range, let's go do that. So let's say domain. So I'm just going to say D for domain. I'm going to open up this funny little bracket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to arrange them from smallest to biggest. So minus five is first because that's the smallest. Then I'm going to put minus three and then positive three. Okay, remember that minus five is smaller than minus three. Then for the range, maybe I should do this a bit smaller. That'll be all of the y values. Okay, so we'll do them in order. Now remember, if there is a number that repeats, like for example, there is a four and a four, you don't have to put four and four in your, in your uh, range. You just put four and then you put six. All right, so that is what the domain and the range would look like for this graph. A mapping diagram. Now, some schools don't use mapping diagrams, but maybe your school does. So it's just a basic little representation of the domain and the range. So what you do is you just make two circles like this. And we could, for example, say this is the domain. Your teacher might do it a little bit differently. And this is the range. And we're just going to go write those numbers from smallest to biggest like that. And then we're going to put the four and the six. You see, so I just took my domain and my range, and I've just gone and represented them using circles. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use arrows. So we're going to start with the first one, which is minus 3 and 4. So minus 3 goes to 4. And then the next one, 3 goes to 6. So 3 goes to 6. And then the next one, minus 5, goes to 4. So if the arrow goes to the same one, that's okay. You just draw it like that. All right, so that is called a mapping diagram. So we've done that for this one. Now we're just going to go graph it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go plot all of these points. So minus 3 and 4. So minus 3 and 4 would go here. And then 3 and 6 would go x is 3, y is 6. By now, you guys are pretty good at plotting these points. And then minus 5 and 4. So minus 5 and 4. All right, so there we have it. And now the big question, is this a function? Well, we definitely know that it is a relation. Maybe I didn't, I, don't, I can't even remember if I remember to, to say that in the beginning. But when they give you a set of numbers like this, as soon as they give you a set of ordered pairs, like some x's and some y's, then we call it a relation. Okay, so we can say a relation is a set of ordered pairs. So it's always a relation. It These will always be a relation. But these won't always be a function. They won't always be a function, okay? So let's make a little note there for ourselves. Um, will always be a function. Sorry, a relation. But it's not always a function. Okay, so these things are always a relation, but it's not always a function. Okay, so Kevin, how do we tell if it's a function? Well, there are um, a couple different ways, but I'm just going to show you the main way. What I want you to do is I want you to look at it, all of these x values. Okay? Are any of them the same? Nope, they're all different. So because they are not, because they're all different, this is a function, okay? 
I will show you some examples in this lesson where it won't be a function, but um, here's the question you've got to ask yourself. Do the x values repeat? The answer for this one was no, so then it is a function. So it is a function. Okay, this might still feel a bit weird for you, um, but we are. Um, I will be showing you um, some examples where it won't be a function. So for this one, this question over here, this one is a function. Okay, now some other ways that we can check. If you look on this diagram, are any of the dots on top of each other? Now, what do I mean by that? Like this, vertically on top of each other. If you ever get a situation like that, where you've got two dots that are vertically on top of each other like that, um, on the same vertical line, then you would say that that is not a function, okay? But what we had was we had these three dots, and so we didn't have any dots that were vertically on top of each other. So that is another reason or another way that you can see that this is a function. So is it a function? Yes, it is. Let's try another example. So in this one, we're just going to go do the same thing. Just remember that the numbers in the front, those are always your x values. We call those the x values. Sometimes we call them the input, and they are also part of the domain. Okay, I know I've already said this, but I'm just helping you guys to get really familiar with this. And then these values, the ones that always come second, those are your y values, sometimes called output, and they are part of the range. Okay, so let's go write out the range, I mean the domain and the range, sorry. Okay, so for the domain, we've got minus 3. Now there's another minus 3, so you don't repeat it, so you'll just rather say minus 3 and 2. For the range, we're going to go, always go from smallest to biggest, so the smallest one is minus 3, then there's a 2, and then there's a 4. Right, so that's the domain and range, and we've done that. Now we're going to do a, a mapping diagram, so you just put your domain and range. Your teacher might not say domain, your teacher might say x and y, or whatever, it doesn't matter. This is just teaching you so you can have a deeper understanding of what happens. But I mean, each school and each teacher has a slightly different technique. Okay, so the domain, we're just going to open up a little circle like that, and the range, we're just going to open up a little circle like that. Now, for the domain, we're just going to go list these values, minus 3 and 2, and for the range, we're going to say minus 3, 2, and 4. And now we're just going to go plot the points or map the diagram. So minus 3 goes to 2. Minus 3 goes to minus 3. Ooh, so now we've got a th two things going from minus 3. Okay, and then 2 goes to 4. All right, that's our mapping diagram. Now we're going to graph. Okay, so the first one is minus 3 and 2. So minus 3 and 2 would go here. And minus 3 and minus 3 goes there. 2 and 4 goes here. All right, now... Is it a function? Well, first of all, can you see there's a vertical part of here where these two dots are directly on top of each other? If you looked at the previous example that I showed you on the previous slide, we said that if that ever happens, then it's not a function, okay? So just because of that, we can say no. Well, let's rather say not a function. But then also, we also said that um, do the x values Whoops, not writing that very nicely. Do the x values repeat? Now let's see. Can you see that these x values are repeating? Ah, so we say, yes, they are repeating. So therefore, it is not a function. By the way, if these x values, if these x values over here are repeating, but then these y values are the same, then it is a, a still a function, because if they have like minus 3 and 2, and then another minus 3 and 2, well, that's stupid, because that's just the same point. So that, that, that would be silly. That would be like putting a dot, and then you'd put another dot. So that still would be a function. That would just be weird, because they would just be repeating the same point. Okay, so you won't really see that happening too much. 
Okay, so for this one, is it a function? No, it's not. Okay, first of all, you can see it on the diagram. You've got that vertical part. Uh, second of all, you can see that the x values are repeating. And if you really want to use the mapping diagram, you could even use a mapping diagram to say that two of the points are coming from the same x value. In the previous example, I'll show you now, we had two of these x values going to the same y value. But that is okay. That's still okay. Um, you, you are allowed to have the y values being the same for it to be a function. Okay? But you don't want the x values to be the same. Then it's not a function. Okay? So is this one a function? No. Right, so here's our last little question, just to make sure that you understand. So you can, obviously you can pause and do mapping diagrams and graphs and whatever, or you can just realize that you only need to look at the x values. That's the easiest way to see if it's a function, okay? Remember that all three of these are relations. They are relations. Remember, it's always a relation. Always a relation but it's not always a function. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So what I do is I look at the x values. Are they repeating? No, they're not. So we say that the x values are not repeating. So then it is a function. It is a function. Let's try the next one. So we look at the x values. Now, are the x values repeating? Whoa, look at these two. Ah, they are repeating. So we say that the x values are repeating. So it's not a function. Not a function. Next one. Let's look at the x values. There, there, there. So are they repeating? So we can say x values are not repeating. So because of that, it is a function. It is a function. Some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, look at these y values. They're repeating. But guys, that doesn't matter. Remember, it doesn't matter if the y values are repeating. That doesn't change anything. What we're looking for is if the x values are repeating. But none of them are repeating in this example. So this one is a function.